sharing with you all my first trimester must-haves. So these are all the things that I absolutely could not live without. I'm also gonna throw some tips and tricks in here just to help you to have an easy and smooth first trimester. If I could go back and give myself one tip of advice, it would just to be enjoy this process, just to let go of all the worries and the anxieties, because I know it's so easy to do during the first trimester and just to focus on how excited I was for this new little baby. So the very first thing that I wanna share with you is kind of what my first trimester was like. So I was not severely nauseous. I felt not great all the time. I kind of felt just like this queasy, oh, I don't really feel the best, but it wasn't terrible. I only threw up one time and it was actually over a banana. So yeah, it was not like not the end of the world at all, but it wasn't until I got into my second trimester because right now I'm currently halfway through my second trimester and I had so much energy and I wanted to do things and it was like a whole new person. So looking back, I think there's a lot of things that I also could have done to help me feel even better had I known how bad I felt. So anyway, the very first thing that I absolutely could not live without in my first trimester was comfy pants. So joggers, yoga pants. If I wasn't going out to dinner or seeing people, I was at home in my joggers. I actually ended up getting a pair of uh, pajama pants that were pretty stretchy and I like lived in those. I absolutely loved them. And it's not necessarily that your stomach is growing at this point. It's more just uncomfortable to have jeans kind of poking into your stomach. It's more just bloat, but it's uncomfortable. So getting something that's comfy that you can, you know, especially being nauseous too at this point, it's so nice just to have like the comfort of just feeling like you don't have things sticking into you. And yeah, so just take my advice and grab some joggers, yoga pants, something comfy. So the second thing that I couldn't live without is my belly band. I actually did a whole review on this. So you can head over and check that out. I'll link that below. I'm actually wearing it today. So I, like I said, I'm halfway through my second trimester and I still wear it from time to time. Uh, this was super helpful in the first trimester because I was not at all ready to be wearing maternity pants. My stomach wasn't big enough to even fill them out. But yet my pants, like when I would go to button them, were so uncomfortable and it didn't feel good. So just having this belly band was super, super helpful. The third thing that I loved during my first trimester was pregnancy apps. So I tried probably five or six different ones. My favorite by far was the bump. Every single day they gave me a little like, this is how big your baby is. These are the things that your baby's doing this week. And then they would also give like three to four different uh, blog posts about what was going on that day or that week and they were just like helpful little tidbits so i really really enjoyed this app but you should try out all the different ones they have i think i tried out sprout and i tried um the what to expect app but like i said my by far my favorite was the bump number four was a book that i've talked about in every single video that i've ever done and that is the real food for pregnancy by lily nichols i adore her if i ever got the chance to sit down and talk with her i would absolutely like love that she is just amazing um, i love all her research this book is going to help you prepare your body to be extra healthy for this baby and just to learn like what kind of nutrients you're putting in she also has a whole section on nausea which was super helpful because I was in the beginning of my first trimester, I was really frustrated with myself for not being able to uh, eat really healthy. Before getting pregnant, I really enjoyed salads and uh, lots of veggies. And as soon as I got pregnant, like I didn't want anything to do with a salad. I didn't want anything to do with veggies. And I, like I said in the beginning of this video, I actually threw up on a banana. So like, I was just like, uh -uh, I don't want anything to do with it. And actually through reading her stuff and she talks about that, that that's real and it's okay. So I think that was really life giving for me. Um, it was really made me forgive myself for not being able to just eat healthy all the time. So I would definitely check out her book. I have a full review on why I love her and why I think her stuff is amazing. And like I said, I will link that below. So the fifth thing that I loved during my first trimester was belly lotion for stretch marks. So I actually did a review on this as well. This is the Earth Mama Belly Butter. I love this stuff. It's amazing. If you want to learn more, definitely click the link below. And the other lotion, I actually got 
this first. This is a Mother Love, and it is a pregnant belly salve. Now, this, I don't know if you can see it from that far, but it is very oily. So this is something that I actually bought first, not realizing that it was so oily, and I could not use it during the day because it would get on my clothes. So I, that's why I had purchased this one right here. So this one I use at night and this one I use during the day, but I absolutely could not live without these. I still don't have stretch marks. I'm in halfway through my second trimester and I'm really hoping that that's why. Uh, my mom had stretch marks and I've heard they're hereditary. So anyway, definitely get a good cream, even if they're not hereditary for you, just to keep your skin's elasticity up. Number six is actually something I didn't use, but I ended up doing a lot of research about coconut oil for pregnancy. And I found out that coconut oil is awesome for stretch marks and especially in preventing them in their early stages. So if I had known this in my first trimester, I would have started using it. So I also have a whole entire blog post talking about organic um, coconut oil and all its benefits during pregnancy, all the different ways you can be using it. And this in specific, I just want to give you a couple tips when choosing a coconut oil. You want to make sure that it's unrefined and cold pressed. This is uh, the best of the best, basically. Because um, you got to think, your, your skin is the biggest organ. And if you're eating this, your baby is going right through the placenta. So you want to make sure that you're getting a really good quality coconut oil, uh, especially if you're going to be, like I said, using it um, to eat. And then on top of that, on your skin. So coconut oil for stretch marks, and you can even continue using this all the way through your pregnancy. Number seven is a body pillow. So halfway through my first trimester, I noticed that I was really sleeping on my back a lot. I'm a huge back sleeper, and I kind of started reading different reviews on like how to put pillows like between your legs and your back, and I ended up having like six pillows at all times, and it was just chaos because every time I had to get up to go to the bathroom, I'd have to reposition the pillows. So I ended up buying a body pillow and I've done a review on this as well. I absolutely love this body pillow and I cannot sleep without it now. It keeps me upright, it's great. So if you're a back sleeper and you need to start transitioning, because I think it's by the second trimester you have to start sleeping on your side. Um, I can't remember if it's, or maybe it's a couple weeks into the second trimester, but either way, you need to start learning how to sleep on your slide, on your slide or on your side. Definitely on your side. <laughs> so just to be able to start transitioning to sleeping on your side, this body pillow is definitely something that can help. Now we're gonna get into some different foods and things that I did to help with the nausea. So the first thing is a water bottle. I was super thirsty during my first trimester. All I wanted to do was drink water and tons of water. Like I kind of start to panic. I still start to panic if I don't have water. Um, I'm not sure exactly why that happens, but I know it's super, super common. So make sure that you get a good water bottle. My favorite is the Yeti. I've had this for forever. Uh, it's just great because it can keep my water cold. I also started drinking water that didn't have ice cubes in it because I just found like I was less thirsty when I was drinking water that was room temperature, which I knew is, is better for me anyway. So definitely get a water bottle that you like that you can be able to take to and from everywhere because you don't want to end up like me in a store and be like, oh my gosh, I need water and not know what to do. <laughs> so the next thing is oyster crackers. So I still have mine in a baggie. I eat them even still from time to time, but I could not live without oyster crackers. I think I went through like seven or eight bags. I love them. I ate them as soon as I got up right before bed. Um, I truly believe this is why I did not throw up more than once. So I would definitely get some oyster crackers. I know a lot of people say saltines, but for me, these were like little bite sized and I could just pop them in while I was working. So I really like oyster crackers. Now the next thing that I could not live without is peppermint candies. So it was Christmas time during my first trimester and candy canes were readily available. So I had tons of candy canes. I still have some because I would go through them. Uh, it just helped to take the edge off. Like I felt like the peppermint just kind of helped to soothe any of that nauseousness that I was feeling, especially in the car. So I'd bring these in the car if I was a passenger 
and I would be um, eating these because I would get really, really car sick. So peppermint candies are super awesome. If you can do peppermint, I would try this. Now the next thing that I also love to do was I had peppermint essential oils and I would just kind of sniff that, especially if I had a headache, sometimes when I was feeling nauseous, but it helped me to not have to take Tylenol, which I know my doctor said Tylenol is totally fine and I've had to take it a handful of times, but it's really nice to have a natural healthy alternative. So I would try peppermint oil, and like I said, you can use that for headaches, for nausea, and there's like a thousand other ways you can use that as well. So the next thing that I did was I had smoothies. And yes, it sounds weird because I said like I hated vegetables, I hated like all kinds of fruit at this point, but something about a fresh smoothie was so delicious. And on top of that, I will be completely honest with you, I was super constipated. I mean, it would be days before I could even go to the bathroom and it was just, it was so frustrating. A smoothie is the one thing that really, really helped me. So if you're having trouble going to the bathroom, try a smoothie. Now this leads me to my next thing, which was actually recommended by my doctor. I was telling her, I was like, I I just get constipated and I like there's nothing I can do I feel like and you just told me you could try Coley's or you could try a um, Metamucil or you could you try all these different things yeah no none of those things like really appealed to me so she recommended I try Raisin Brand and I still eat Raisin Brand right now every single morning I have just a small little bowl because it just helps to keep me regular so that might be a tip if you're really struggling with constipation try Raisin Brand and or any smoothie. Number 13, you don't want to forget snacks. I notoriously would get super hungry, almost to the point of hangry, like that. It would go from, I'm totally fine, to, oh my gosh, I'm starving. What am I going to do without food? Someone get me food. I'm, I'm going to die. <laughs> it's basically how I felt. So have some snacks on hand and snacks that you like and will eat. For me, like I said, that was oyster crackers or like pretzels. And yes, there may not be the healthiest thing, but that is what helped me. That is what helped me to feel like the most at ease. So I would definitely recommend get some things within moderation that you will eat as snacks and keep them on hand. Keep them in your purse, keep them in your bag. Even tell your husband, say, hey, listen, when I start you know, getting a little hangry, you might wanna hand me a granola bar. <laughs> so try that. Um, but like I said, make sure that you don't forget to grab extra snacks because during this time you're going to be super hungry. So this next part is not necessarily things that you need. And these are just little, I guess just little tidbits that I did to just help me to stay healthy throughout my pregnancy. So the first thing is I had a list of questions going into my first prenatal appointment. So you really want to make sure that you go into this asking all the questions that you have because A, it'll put you at ease and B, getting all these answers will be really helpful for upcoming appointments. Also, if this doctor is new, it's gonna help you to get to know them a lot faster rather than you know appointment by appointment waiting for them to kind of bring things up. So make sure you head into your appointment with a list of questions and don't feel funny because pregnancy is all new, especially if you're a first time mom, there's things you don't know and that's totally okay. So when I asked my husband, what did I use or what did I do during the first trimester? Like what were my must haves? He's like sleep <laughs> and he's not kidding. Like I just wanted to sleep and I'm not a sleeper. I normally like to sleep like seven to eight hours at night and I don't like naps, like no thank you. I was consistently taking several naps a week. I would need to sleep nine to 10 hours a night. Like I, my body was I even got to the point where like my husband at night would have to come home and do chores. So I was just so drained and so tired and that's not like me. So just make sure that you're getting enough sleep and give yourself the grace to do that. Like it's totally okay. Your body's working so hard on building this little baby and just growing him or her into the little person that they're going to be. So make sure you give yourself just a little pat on the back and say, it's okay, I'll take a nap and be all right with it. And the very last thing that I did every single day, two times a day, was walked. I talked to my doctor about you know, doing different exercises and she was like, just walk. Like, don't stress about working out every day, just at least go for a walk. It's really good for baby, it's really good for you. 
And not to mention, I really felt like it helped my mental health, helped me to just stay positive and just have less anxiety in general. So that is gonna wrap up all my first trimester must-haves, tips, tricks. I hope that these helped. I hope that you walk away from this and you feel like, okay, I got some knowledge on you know, what I can be doing during my first trimester. There's not a whole lot of things necessarily that you need because your body's not really changing yet, but it's just helpful to just have little tidbits to help you to have the best experience possible. So anyway, if you have any questions, make sure you comment below. And if not, I'll see you guys next week.